Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to season three of the Agile World, where we discuss customer and employee experience, organizational and workforce transformation, and how business can adapt and continually improve in an agile age. The Agile World podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed in this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile World podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the relationship between customer and employee experience and how successful organizations plan, implement, and measure this relationship, as well as find ways to successfully improve both of them. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Tanya Thomas, Director of Customer and Employee Experience at Experian. Uh, Tanya, welcome to the show. Hi, Greg. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, looking forward to talking with you. Um, so let's let's start a little bit uh, talking a little bit about your role at Experian Health, which is director of both customer experience and employee experience, which I think is um, interesting and in in and of itself, but. Um, why don't you start by just talking a little bit about your background and how you got into your current role? Sure. So I'd have to say that customer experience is definitely my first love. Um, I've been fascinated with just trying to understand what makes for a differentiated customer experience really since the earliest days of my career. I studied communications in college, so I've also just been kind of fascinated with just humans and how they tick um, and progressed from roles in sales and training into technology and fintech. Actually, I took a job at a startup and had the opportunity to build out all the customer facing functions and teams there, um, which was a huge learning experience. And then for the last five years, I've just been learning about what is possible with big data um, at Experian. I first started in their D2C consumer division, and now I'm in the healthcare space. Um, But the evolution to include employee experience really came naturally, to be honest. Um, You know, having a strong customer experience is so dependent on a customer centric company and culture. So in my roles in CX, I was always kind of dabbling in things like internal comms or new hire orientation and things like that to just make sure we were infusing customer narrative into the organization. And then the longer I worked in CX, like the more clear those dependencies really became um, between, you know, the two worlds. And so it seemed like every initiative I had on the CX side, there was just as much internal implication to it as maybe there was external. Um, Yeah. So that's just been a natural progression that I've really enjoyed. That's great. And I, um, I've certainly written a lot about that that relationship between the two, and and um, it sounds like I you know I applaud you and, and Experian for for understanding that that linkage um, sooner than some. We'll just we'll just put it that way. Um, but can you talk a little bit about what does it mean to work in in both CX and EX? Because uh, you know there's a lot of folks that are they're in one or the other, and they may deal with. Um, with other teams or departments or, or individuals even, but, you know, what is, uh, you know, what's, what's, what is it like to work with both at the same time? Yeah, I, I, I found it really interesting that I feel like how CX programs or even EX programs develop in any given organization seem really tied to the skill sets, you know, of the, of the leaders in place. And so I, I think what we found at Experian Health is that there are just a couple of functions within the business that are just so incredibly cross-functional in nature that it just doesn't seem to really belong or make sense in just one, you know, one smaller part of the business. And so at least three of those categories, I'll call them, fall under my remit. Um, And they encompass both the customer and the employee experience, right? And so those things are uh, voice of customer, voice of employee, or, you know, what we would call our insights programs, and then also communications, right, both internally and um, clients. And then lastly, what I call engagement, right? So this could look like things like, you know, experience design initiatives, advocacy programs, partnering with innovation, um, those kinds of things. You kind of touched on some of this, but um, how... You mentioned some of the metrics that are that are involved in this, but how is let's call it holistic success measured? Um, and you know, because I, I think a lot of people are, even if they understand the relation that there is a relationship between CX and EX, mm-hmm. um, they always kind of balk at well, you know, but we can't we can't necessarily tie it together with metrics or ROI or stuff. So yeah, you know, how do you, how do you look at success in in both of those together? 
Yeah, it's, I would say that, you know, on the customer side, our measurement practices are, are really pretty kind of best practice standard, right? I mean, we're definitely utilizing common metrics like NPS or levels of satisfaction at various points in the client journey. And it's been, again, sort of natural to kind of just shift the, shift the lens and use the same types of metrics um, to measure our employee experience because it's been a, it's been a learning and a culture driving effort to even just get our organization familiar with, well, what is NPS? And well, okay, it's a loyalty metric. Well, then I guess that means we should be looking at retention. And you know, what does that mean for us financially? What does that mean for us experientially? So we're, we're doing that same thing with our employee experience, right? And saying, okay, well, retention is still a metric that makes sense for us to to understand and value. Um, so ENPS probably still makes sense as a metric, right? Um, so, but I, I think I could definitely say that over the last couple years, measuring that employee experience has really been kind of more of the real, you know, frontier to tackle because we've really had to get creative. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot more, I would say emotional, especially adapting to all of the mayhem that 2020 and beyond have brought us. And so we've, we've had to get creative and kind of break outside of the mold of what we established with our customer measuring practices. And, um, you know, we've created employee advisory committees or, um, used, you know, scale of emotions to capture sort of a collective mood of the organization at any, you know, particular time. So, um, that's been really interesting and, and very impactful, but I think has, deviated a little bit from the typical, you know, kind of voice of customer practices that we have in place on the client side. Yeah. I mean, since, since both those, you know, the ENPS and, and NPS, let's just use those as an example, since both of those kind of fall in your, in your purview, are, do you see, uh, is there a correlation between the two? I mean, I know I realized the last 18 months has been sort of a, um, you know, has thrown all kinds of wrenches into all sorts of things. But are you are you seeing like is that is that part of your you know on your radar so to speak of of like relating those yes. two to one another? Yes, absolutely. Um, so you know, I don't want to speak too specifically about sure, sure. you know our organization, but I could give you a very high level example. You sure. could look deeply into you know comment themes and employee. Um, feedback and maybe you see a, a pain point area or a focus area coming from, let's say, uh, the relationship management organization, right? Yeah. And then you could go look at your customer feedback data and say, oh, interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's a correlation or a dip um, in, you know, scores around the sentiment of account management on the client side. And maybe there's something culturally that's going on, on, you know, internally, whether that be burnout going, you know, happening or just new tools needed, better training materials. I mean, so I, there have yeah. been so many times that, you know, opportunities like that exist where you can, you can identify a pain point in one and then draw a correlating line to a pain point in the other. Um, and so, you know, that drives some really great broad initiatives because, you know, there's, there's implications and an action you can take on both sides. Yeah, that's great. And I, I, I also think that's a benefit of, of you, you know, sitting with both of those, those areas as well. Not that it can't happen in it when, when they're separate, but it, I think it's, it's great to, to, for you to be able to be looking at, at those things, uh, you know, parallel paths, let's say. So let's, um, let's dive into a couple related areas that, that touch on, um, what you do and and the relationships between CX and EX. Um, why don't we start with HR and employee experience? Um, how would you describe their relationship? Because they're um, for those less familiar, they're not the same thing. <laughs> and for those that that are um, certainly there's there's often a little um, you know there's plenty of issues that can arise. You know where where do they overlap? Where do they diverge? How how do you look at the you know your your piece of employee experience versus um, or in addition to you know what the HR function? Yeah, so I have to say in my experience that partnership between an employee experience team and an HR team is really just the stuff that organizational dreams are made of. I'll tell you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that you know our HR partners are truly the most critical partners um, that we have on the employee front, obviously. Um, yeah. 
there is a good amount of overlap, but in, in really positive ways. Um, so, you know, it's like we we're talking about employee insights, right? As it relates to employee insights, we all being the employee experience team, the HR team and leadership, um, need to have sort of an equal level of involvement in programmatically, you know, what we're after, what we're measuring visibility to the data that we collect, um, action planning associated, you know, with that data. Um, but then where things tend to diverge are things like, maybe employee engagement technology, you know, how are we equipping our people managers with the right tools and tech to enable remote team building events, you know, or surprise and delight employee gifting. I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, obviously HR again would be a a key partner, but, um, you know, wouldn't probably fall into somebody's, someone's actual job to be thinking about, okay, like, here's what our employee data says. We're, we're dealing with, you know, the extreme agility and change management needed for everything we've been trying to overcome over the last couple of years, especially in healthcare, um, you know, during yeah, COVID. Yeah. So, you know, that it wouldn't probably typically be HR to be tasked with evaluating the the technological, you know, things that we might need to consider, right. Or new new tools and resources in in that way. And so that's where I feel like experience design, you know, backgrounds and, you know, more partnership with technology and things like that have really come in handy and really complement the skills that our peers in HR bring when we can tackle those things together. Moving to the next topic here, you mentioned, um, you know, both external as well as internal communications as well. How about um, the relationship similar to to the HR EX relationship? How about the relationship between internal communications and employee experience? What should organizations be keeping in mind when, um, you know, there's obviously there's things they need to communicate, but, you know, when, when looking at it through an employee experience lens, uh, what advice do you have for, for the internal communications component? Yeah, that relationship between internal comms and employee experience is absolutely critical and key. Um, and then the, the things that we keep in mind when we're you know approaching that, or if I had advice to give, it's I find myself saying so many of the same things I say when I'm talking about customer experience. I'm talking about trust. I'm talking about transparency, thought leadership, um, the importance of taking action. You know, with the insights yeah. that our that our employees are sharing. And making sure that that action is highly visible, um, that our our leaders have a strong you know voice and presence that are that that give our employees a sense of um, you know of peace, I guess, and clarity about what our strategy is and what our mission is. Um, so, and letting empathy really drive us. Those are those are all things I've been talking about for over a decade, you know, in customer experience, and so. It's, it's just so natural to take all of those same concepts and, and pull them into the way that we're communicating with employees. Um, and then, again, tying that inherent connection to the customer experience, that also gives me the opportunity to ensure that we have customer storytelling going on, you know, and that yeah. our, our, our initiatives around em- engaging um, different parts of the organization and improving the customer experience are clear and visible. So, um yeah, I mean, all of those things would be would be things I would say to think about if you're trying to have you know an effective internal communication uh, approach. The approach with customers is you know you measure those messages that go out and you determine you know even from a marketing not even a CX but even from a marketing perspective you know you measure which tagline gets the best response and call to actions and stuff like that. I I feel that a lot of internal communications is a lot more, well, this is what it is. And we're, you know, it might, it might be phrased nicely and it may use the, um, you know, the, the overall um, internal branding, so to speak. But I feel like there's been a lot less attention paid to it from a, well, is this message actually resonating or did I check the box and make sure that it got, you know, for lack of a better term, posted to the bulletin board or internet or, or whatever. So, you know, are you, are you keeping those things in mind as well when you're, when you're doing internal, you know, or working with internal communications as well? 
Absolutely. I mean, we go straight to the employee feedback to drive what we communicate about, you know, and yeah. it's really interesting to even measure to your point about what's impactful. Like, is this something rather than making assumptions about what we think would make sense for our employees to care about, like we're measuring what is differentiating their experience. And when we can look at that data and say, wow, all this stuff we're doing around diversity, inclusion, and belonging, for example, is being called out, you know, by name. This is this is becoming a differentiator. So, okay, let's keep that drumbeat going, you know, like this matters to people. Um, it's key. I mean, with, yeah. without insight to that data and without kind of having a key leadership um, role, I guess, in driving that, that approach, um, then, you know, you're just putting out what is subjectively what you think your employees would care about. <laughs> right. Or, or it's the, and you know, HR gets a bad rap for this, but, or it's the compliance mindset of, okay, well, you know, Correct. again, we, we had to send this notice out and we did. And so therefore box checked and let's move on versus, wow, that, that notice was really scary to someone that doesn't understand the motive behind it, which was actually a good motive. Um, you know, so, so I, think to your point, the understanding not only what resonates, but also the the empathy and the manner in which things are being communicated. And hey, you know, this is a we're talking about people's health insurance, you know, just to use an example, this is really important to people and they take this seriously. Let's not just let's not just check a box here and, and send out a notice. Let's try to understand where where this might impact maybe not even everybody, but some people where this is, you know, this is really um, this is a critical issue. Right. I was just um, speaking a couple weeks ago on the on the concept of humanizing your executive leadership, you know, and, and even from that standpoint, like almost having a branding, having that experience and branding kind of perspective when you think about executive communications, you know, and especially yeah. when we're in crisis, right, like has just been so, so critical and again, partners to HR, right? But not necessarily like core competency. And so when right. you com when the forces are combined, you know, what you what you result with, um, I think is is pretty impactful. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I and I, I love the way you characterize it as a partnership. And, you know, as opposed to, you know, a, one team handing something off to another and, and kind of hoping for the best. That's that I, I love that, uh, that approach. Um, well, one one last topic before we wrap up. Um, let's talk about product innovation um, and and CX and EX. So, you know, you and I chatted a little bit before the show, and you had mentioned how um, one of the things you brought um, from your CX background was bringing voice of the customer into some of the product development approach, um, which is certainly a you know that's a benefit not only to CX but often you know the the employees are the ones using some of the products that get created as well whether whether they're you know on the back end as admins or helping customers or, or many different cases how else do you think that um, you know closely aligning CX and EX can help organizations develop and improve products more effectively with our approach initially to pro or to um, voice of customer and providing insights to the business. I, I really felt passionate about making sure that that wasn't always just through an operational lens. Yeah. Sorry, I've got construction going on here. Um, so, you know, we NPS, satisfaction scores, that's great for measuring your operations, but then we also want to allow for customer intelligence, right? And so we've created a, a, a digital community where our clients who are really passionate about innovation and our products can participate um, and give feedback. And we've actually recently taken that same tool and that same sort of intelligence approach and expanded our contract with that particular company to do the same thing on the employee side, right? Because yeah. not only should our employees have exposure to all of that great insight coming in from our client communities that are driving our product development and innovation, um, but we also consider them a key audience in our approach to innovation right. and, you know, their, their boots on the ground. So, um, yeah, so that's been, that's brand new actually. And that's, that's a really fun, you know, new initiative to be expanding upon the, one of those critical tools that we use and make sure that our employees have a voice in that process too. Wonderful. Well, this is great. I really, really love hearing what you're up to and, um, thanks for joining the the show. Um, for those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing? Probably LinkedIn, I would say. <laughs> well, again, I'd like to thank Tanya Thomas, Director of Customer and Employee Experience at Experian Health for joining the show. 
Thanks for listening to The Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile World Podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, from my website at theagile.world.